hello guys happy new year and um how has been your holidays all right um, it's nice having you in class again today um actually not that we are not on holidays but um, we just need to keep you prepared when you are back from holidays right good so yeah once again happy new year how has been the holidays and uh, hope you had some good time so yeah thanks for coming to class if you have um, any issue related to this or maybe assignment or personal lecture whatever the case is or maybe you're trying to teach yourself you can always um, contact us and then we should be able to provide them the needed assistance um we are going to look at something on compass surveying right good or let's say compass survey whatever it is and then the topic we are going to consider today is a um, local attraction it's actually a concept or let's say yeah, it's a concept used to describe why we cannot always get the true the true note or magnetic note why we always have um, um, a little bit of deviation from the, um, the free swinging um, needle of our compass right so it's actually a phenomenon used to concept used to describe that phenomenon so um the local attraction you know when you are trying to make an um, observation with your compass and then you are close to magnetic rocks iron poles maybe electric poles or maybe um, cables carrying um, current you know there tends to be a form of um, attraction between that your the needle of your compass and those um, objects. So this concept is used to describe the what the um, that particular action or phenomenon. Now we have a question here, and then they said we should determine the line that um, has local attraction, and then we should eliminate that line, and also um, get the corrected bearing of the line. So by that we are going to get the corrected bearing of all the lines. So we are given the line, the forward and the backward bearing. We already know that um, the difference between the forward and the backward bearing of any line ideally is supposed to be what 180 degrees, right? So if you have AB, which means BA will be AB plus 180. As you can see right here on the screen, we have 32 here. So the BA, which is the back bearing, will be what 32 plus 180. But most of the times it's not always like that as you can see now we have 77 here right and then we have 262 you know from your calculation that the difference between these two lines might not give you 180 right same thing we are having here um 112 then 287 so these two lines would i say when the observations were made we can say or we can deduce that or we can assume that or we are made to understand that there was a bit of what local attraction so we are going to eliminate the local attraction that's just the essence of today's video so now um we used de as our control line now wh why we use de was because we are going to start from a line whose difference is equal to 180 completely now if you look at this particular line we have um, 122 as our what as our forward bearing and then we have um, 200 and 302 rather as our what as our back bearing so by the time you add 180 to 122 you are definitely going to have what 302 now let's come to this 77 77 plus 180 hope you are with your calculator we have 257 not 262 same thing as 112 plus what 180 we have what 292 not 287 so you can see that these two lines the forward bearing and the backward bearing of these two lines their difference does not their difference do not give you um, what their difference isn't 180 right so which means that we are going to have some local attraction that we are going to um, apply corrections here so but if you look at this de it's 180 then let's see um 265 265 minus 65 minus 180 the reason why we are doing minus or the reason why we are subtracting at this point is because the fourth bearing is what is more than 180 so if the fourth bearing is less than 180 you add 180 to get the back bearing if the fourth bearing is greater than 180 you subtract 180 from it to what to get the back bearing so you can see now that 265 minus 180 actually give us what 
85, which means this EA and DE they are free from what local attraction. But we're having BC and then CD to be having what some local attraction. Now, how do we go about? So we have a note here. We use DE as our control line since it is free of what local attraction. That is the difference between the back bearing and forward bearing is what 180. So that is how you are going to know if a line is free of what local attraction. Difference between the back bearing and the forward bearing is equal to what 180. So this line DE, this is it. The difference between this and this, so 302 minus 122 should give you what 180. So we are going to use that. Now we move on. So 302 minus 122 is 180, which means we are going to use that DE as our what as our control line. So, back bearing of CD, that is DC. Now, you know, this is CD, right? The forward bearing. So, if you now see the back bearing, it will now be what DC is what 287. Now, to get the forward bearing, it will be what this 287 what minus 180, which is 107. But what we observed here was 112, not this 107. But the observed CD, which is this line, the observed CD is what. 112 not 107 as we have got in here which means we have an error so how do you get the error the error is actually equal to the observed minus the computed these are the observed everything you see here they are the observed then the computed sorry this should be computed then the computed should be what whatever you did by computation during your calculation are we together so we have the observed minus the computed. so we are having 107 as the observed for cd whereas we come as the computed for cd rather whereas we observed what 102 of here so the difference will now give us the error are we together also the back bearing of bc which is at this point bc now if bc is the forward bearing then the back bearing will be what cb which is what you can see here so the back bearing is what 262 now what will now happen is that since we already have an error here, we are now going to add that error to this particular back bearing. Now, you just have to take your time to understand it. It's not confusing. I know you will get it. Now, what we did was that we already have a particular magnitude of error at this point here, right? Which is the 5 degree. So, we are not going to do away with it. We are going to apply it to the next forward bearing, which we are going to get at this point. Are we together? So, now... If we, all, we know that the back bearing of BC, which is what CB, is 262, which is what we have here. So we are now going to apply this error here. Now, there is a note here. The sign was reversed for the correction. That is, if the error is positive, the correction will be negative. And if the error is negative, the correction will be, what, will be positive. Are we together? Good. What does that mean? That simply means that when we add the error here, where is the error? We add an error of 5 degrees here, a positive error, right? Because the observed minus the computed gave us a positive value. Now the correction will be negative. That's why you can see that the correction was actually the value of the correction was actually negative. It was subtracted from what that particular uh, the particular back bearing we are talking about. Are we together? So that's why you now see this 262 minus five degrees, which now gave us what 257. Now from this 257, we can have what a forward bearing. Is that not remember that this 257 is actually a back bearing this 262 but because it had an error of what five degrees when we subtracted it we add what this 257 so we are now going to use this back bearing to have another forward bearing so this 257 minus 180 because it's greater than 180 right so this 257 minus 180 will actually give us what 77 and that 77 is actually what the forward bearing of what bc which is corresponding with this one good so the observed BC is 77. The next one now is that since we already have BC to be 77, then we are now going to compare it with the one we computed. Are we together? Remember what we did at this point. This was the one we computed. And then this is the one we observed. At this, at this point now, we computed 77 and we also observed 77. So that should not actually confuse you. If what we had computed here was 79, then we are now going to say 77 minus 77. We are going to have something like what the observed which is 77 minus the computed which is 79 but in this case the two values are equal which means there is no error so we are now have what 77 minus 77 which is what you have seen here which is zero so we are now going to add this zero to this new what back bearing and what back bearing is that ab right 
Now, the back bearing, the forward bearing of AB is 32. Therefore, the back bearing, which is BA, as you can see here, will be what? 2, 1, 2, right? So that 2, 1, 2 plus this error, you know, plus or minus 0 is always that same value. So there is no need of which, taking time of the of the sign. But I've actually explained to you what how important the sign is. If your error is positive, then your correction will be negative. If your error is negative, your correction will be what? Will be positive. Are we together? So since plus or minus 0 is actually the same thing, so we now have 2, 1, 2 plus 0, which now give us what? This 2, 1, 2. Now, this 2, 1, 2 is actually what? The corrected back bearing of what? AB. So we are now going to do what? Subtract 180 from it. Upon subtracting 180 from it, we have what? 32. And you can see now that the 32 is actually the what? The observed forward bearing we have earlier. Are we together? Good. So now, 32 minus 32. We observed 32. We've computed 32. So we have 0. Right? Good. So we are now going to add this zero to the next back bearing. And the next back bearing is what? The back bearing of EA. Right? So this zero plus 85 will still give us what? 85. Now 85 plus 180 will give us what? 265. So you can see now that the point where we had to make corrections were what? We are at this um, point where we add them um, 5 degrees 4 at this point. Are we together? So finally, the line AB is free still the same thing line bc we have 77 and now 257 line cd we have what 107 and what 287 now then line de we have what 122 and 302 then line ee we have what 265 and what 85 now this particular method was a bit long and cumbersome right there is an alternative method good let's look at this remember that we are still working on these lines right we have um a, B, B, C, C, D, E, A, and E, um, D, E, and what? E, A, right? Good. Now, look at this particular approach. You have something like this. You have a line, right? Line A, B, 32, B, A, 3, 1, 2. The same values we add, but we had to separate the forward bearing and the backward bearing to different lines. So, we have all of them here. Now, the next thing we are going to do is that, remember, we are starting from what? From the last point we told you that we are starting from what the we use de as our control line right so we are starting from de so if this is de then de is zero because there is no error since it is free of local attraction that means we are going to add zero to it so we have zero here the next thing we are going to do now is that since this last point is zero we are now going to what say we are applying this zero to this next point as well are we together so since we are applying zero to this next point, remember how the line is. Let's just assume that these values are not there. Assume that these values are not here yet. Let us now start from having only these bearings, right? Good. So since DE is a control line, we have zero, zero added to it, which are these two zero. So we are now going to repeat this zero. Are we together? Upon repeating this zero, it will now be what? The essence of repeating this zero, we actually showed you earlier. When we got to this point, which is um, the five degrees here. Yeah? Remember that we had to subtract it on the next line, right? Good. So that's the essence of repeating it. So we had to apply it again on the next line. So 265 plus or minus zero, which is the same thing. We have what? 265. Now this 265 minus 180 will give you what? 85, right? You can actually confirm that from your calculator. We have 265 minus what? 180. So we have what? 85 which is now this corrected bearing. So now, 85 and the observed 85, what would be the correction? 85 minus 85 is actually what? Zero. Remember what we did the other time? We told you that, how do you get your correction? Which is what, okay, this, this error is actually what? The observed minus the computed, right? Or the observed minus corrected. We are trying to say computed or corrected. So now the observed minus the computed or corrected will now give you an error. The correction will now be a reverse of that particular sign. Is that not good? Now come and see the practical example here. So since we already have the corrected here, and then this is actually the observed. So by the time we do the subtraction, we are going to have what our correction will be, right? So 80, 85 plus 0 will actually give you 0. So since we have a 0 here, we repeat the 0 at this point, right? So upon repeating the 0 at this point, it will now be what? 32 plus 0, which will give us what? Another 32. So since we already have a forward bearing here, we can now add 180 to that forward bearing. 
to give us a back bearing. So 180 plus 32 from your calculator should be able to give us, let's say we have 180 plus what, 32, right? 180 plus 32. So it should be able to give us what, 212, which is this 212 you're seeing here. Now, when you see this 212 here, remember that the observed back bearing of that line AB is still 212 which means the correction here is what is still zero so upon writing the correction here as zero you repeat that same correction again are we together you repeat that same correction so when you repeat that correction you now add it with this 77 so upon adding it with this 77 so it will now be what 77 plus zero to give you what 77 so you now have another forward bearing bc right so now when you have that other forward bearing bc you add 180 to that forward bearing again to now give you what 257 now this is where you would see something more practical because every other values we've been seeing zero now you have seen an error so you have what 257 now if you look at the forward bearing cb what we had earlier was what uh, sorry the backward bearing cb what we had earlier was what 262 right which is this 262 and not this 257 we are having here right you can see that we add what 262 as a back bearing of what bc which is actually what cb which is actually what cb so instead of having this 262 what we need is 257 so what is the difference between 257 and 262 which means it is 5 and now how do we get the 5 we are going to subtract that 5 from what 262 to arrive at 257 now let's come back to this remember that when we did the error we had observed minus corrected right or observed minus computed but when we wanted to apply the correction it was negative and we told you that if the error is positive the correction is what is negative now on this second table or on this particular method which is a bit shorter you already know that since this 262 is bigger than 257 which means the value for the correction will be negative because you are going to subtract five degrees from 262 for you to be able to arrive at what 257 right so that's why you are seeing minus five degrees here so it will not give you this so since we already have minus five degrees here we are going to repeat that minus five degrees as on the next line right so upon repeating that minus five degrees on the next line which means we are subtracting five degrees from what 112 degrees right so by the time you do the subtraction you would have something like 107 and that 107 is another forward bearing am i right good so that 107 plus 180 should be able to give you what 287 right now if you look at that 287 it is same thing as the what the back bearing of line cd which we are given line cd is what this is the back bearing which is what 287 so if you look at it it's same thing as what the 287 which means the correction here is zero so you repeat that same correction again so upon adding 122 to um zero or zero to 122 you still have what 122 which means at this point, remember we started from D, sorry, we started from D, right? So which means at this point, we have been able to detect and correct for the local attraction in our set of observation. So with this second method or this first method, any of the methods or any of the approaches you are going to use, you should just understand the basics. But if we are going to make any recommendations, we are going to recommend that you understand this method because this method is a little bit um, straightforward and a bit easier. But understanding this first one and understanding the second one actually gives you what actually gives you an edge so that's why we have to make the both of them together and then maybe share them which is so that you can be able to see how well you can go about um, detecting local attraction and also eliminating local attraction in any set of what compass um, survey or maybe compass um, um, competition or whatever the case is so yeah thanks for coming to class if you have um, any issue related to this or maybe assignment or personal lecture whatever the case is of when you're trying to teach yourself you can always then contact us and then we should be able to provide them the needed assistance so yeah um once again happy new year we wish you a great year the year is loaded for us at the channel and we are going to share with you so many amazing stuff so just stick around keep supporting us thanks for sharing this video thanks for liking thanks for commenting we are going to see you on our next video have a nice time bye